There are two parts to building an aesthetic physique. And by aesthetic physique, I don't mean a chunky bodybuilder physique, but rather an aesthetic athlete physique like the aesthetic god Leon Edwards. The first is obviously training and lifting weights. But the second less glamorous way of building muscle and arguably the most important way to build muscle is nutrition. Because I'm here to make fitness great again, I'm gonna be doing a full day of eating as well as a chest and shoulder workout to show you guys what a day looks like to build muscle. My diet is very simple and I feel you can learn a lot about it because I don't overcomplicate it. I see so many Instagram influencers make these complicated meals and do some some crazy meal preps that make nutrition look so complicated. But nutrition for building muscle is not complicated and you'll see that with my meals. So currently I'm about to end my cut. So this full day of eating is a cutting full day of eating. But if you're bulking, I'll give you recommendations as to what I would change if I were bulking. So whether you're bulking or cutting, this video will benefit you. And like I said before, this is a very simple full day of eating. I'm not gonna be a dorky bodybuilder and measure all my food. I try and eat the same thing every day so that I don't have to track my calories every day, but rather track my calories once or twice just to see how much I'm eating. This method has worked for me as I went from about 180 pounds to 160 pounds, which proves you don't have to be a nerd and be super scientific about your eating. But anyways, that's my philosophy. Now let's get into the full day of eating. So when I wake up, I obviously drink a lot of water. You guys should be drinking about a gallon of water per day. This is the water bottle that I use. I feel like it makes it so easy to track my water because drinking two of these is a gallon of water. So it's very easy to make sure you drink a gallon of water and it takes the guesswork out of drinking water. And it's also not a gallon jug that makes you look like a dorky bodybuilder. So if you're looking for a cool water bottle like that, I'll leave a link in the description. But after I drink water, because I work out first thing in the morning, I like to drink orange juice and have a Lucky Charms bar to start off my day. My reasoning behind this is to get carbs in before my workout so I'm energized. And I'm typically not very hungry in the morning, so this combination is very easy for me to digest. You might be looking at the Lucky Charms bar and think, wow, that's super unhealthy. Surprisingly, the macros of the Lucky Charms bar are actually pretty solid, and it does have a little bit of sugar in, but because I'm not super hungry in the morning, I feel like it's worth it to get in carbs in the morning. So my pre-workout meal totals to 200 10 calories, 11 grams of protein, three grams of fat, and 44 grams of carbs. So before my workout, I like to take a pre-workout to give me a little bit more energy. This is the pre-workout I'm currently taking from Mansports. If you guys wanna try out, use code Martin at mansports.com for a discount. So this guy's absolute recom. We're gonna be doing heavy bench press today. We just finished warming up. It's gonna be about 95 kilograms, which is about 209 pounds. So because the cameraman is actually on the camera right now, I have to do, use my stupid brother to spot me, but gonna go for about six to eight reps here and we'll see what I can do. Alright, so I just finished heavy bench pressing. The bench press is going to be our strength builder, so now we're going to do more of a hypertrophy focus movement. That's going to be the incline bench. I like doing incline bench with dumbbells just because of the stretch you can get at the bottom, and then you can also bring your hand towards the middle of the top. So incline bench press, a little bit for higher reps this time, lower reps because strength isn't our priority here. So now we're gonna do a isolated movement. So we're gonna do a chest fly just to isolate the chest here. We're gonna do mid-level, kind of just base the whole entire chest. Sometimes we'll do low to high cable flies, but we'll switch that every like four weeks or so. So we have, we isolate both. For flies, make sure that you're actually thinking about bringing your elbows together because of where the chest inserts. The chest inserts on your upper arms. It doesn't insert on your forearm or your hands. Cause I see so many people do this kind of bear hug motion here. Like look how much range of motion I have. So cue yourself to bring your elbows or your biceps together to get the full range of motion of the chest. So in between chest and shoulders, I like to hit posture. Today we're gonna to be isolating the low traps here. I've talked a lot about posture in my other videos, but a lot of people don't implement posture into their own workout routines. Like if you do a typical bodybuilding routine, posture is not hit. And usually with bodybuilding routines, you end up getting these rounded shoulders because of how strong your chest is. So we're gonna balance that out with some pulling motions. We're gonna be doing wide raises. Do super light weight here. A lot of people, when they do wide raises, they struggle to feel their low traps because they're doing way too much weight. Form over strength here. So I'm only gonna be using about seven pounds here because form is so important. So I'm gonna be doing higher reps around 10 to 15 reps. For this movement, focus on keeping your shoulder down because if you have your shoulder raised up, your upper traps will take over and bringing your shoulder blades together at the back. All 
right, so to start shoulders, we're gonna be doing lateral raises. We're gonna be doing a rest pause, which is essentially we're gonna do heavy lateral raises for 30 pounds, then wait 15 seconds, then do higher reps with, there were no 20s, I would prefer to do 20s, but we'll do them with 15s. The textbook will tell you to do overhead press first because it's a compound movement for the shoulders, but what my brother and I like to do is we like to hit lateral raises first, just because it's so important for an aesthetic physique and getting those broad shoulders. All right, so the second exercise will be a standing overhead press. The standing overhead press has to be the most hated on exercise by bodybuilders because it's hard, because there's a huge core demand. But if you do standing overhead press from the beginning, your core won't be a limiting factor and it'll actually increase in strength with your shoulders. So there's never been a point when I do overhead press where I'm like, oh man, my core is holding me back. My core is pretty strong because I've been doing this for years. If you're doing seated overhead press, start doing standing overhead press. But yeah, we'll be doing standing overhead press second. If you're just starting, I would consider doing standing overhead press first just to build your strength. But if you're more advanced, I think lateral raises first is better just to emphasize the lateral delt and get that more set of First exercise was lateral delt movement with lateral raises. Second exercise was more front delts with the overhead press. So now I'm gonna be doing a rear delt exercise, just reverse cable fly. Pretty simple movement. I like to come down a little bit just because it aligns with the fibers of the rear delt a little bit better. Reverse cable fly. If you guys want the sets, reps, and rest time for this workout, check out my brother and my Ultimate Athletic Bodybuilding Academy. Not only do you get an athletic bodybuilding push-pull leg split every month, but you also get access to weekly Q&As. But if you're a beginner, you should try out the Athletic Bodybuilding Beginner Program that will help you progress the more intermediate and advanced lifting program. I'll leave a link to both in the description, and if you use code EATING, you'll get 20% off both programs. So right after my workout, because it's about a 25 minute drive from my gym to my apartment, I like to have some sort of sports drink to replenish my glycogen stores. So many bodybuilders were stressed having protein right after your workout but won't stress having carbs. Carbs are super important post-workout as they help prevent muscle protein breakdown which is why I like to have a sports drink right after my workout. So my sports drink ends up being 100 calories and 25 grams of carbs. So on my way home I like to have my first actual meal and today was a chipotle bowl. My chipotle bowl for cutting has double chicken, white rice, lettuce, black beans, and cheese. This meal ends up totaling to about 775 calories, 81.5 grams of protein, 59 grams of carbs, and 26.5 grams of fat. So this is my cutting Chipotle meal, but if I were bulking, I'd do one serving of chicken, extra rice, and do a burrito to increase the amount of carbs I have in this meal. My fourth meal later in the day will be rice and eggs, and I'm eating eggs to get some more fats and proteins in. This meal ends up totaling to 606 calories, 33.1 grams of protein, 71.4 grams of carbs, and 19 grams of fat. And my last meal of the day will be a protein strawberry and banana shake. If I were bulking, I would do a mask inner shake with more calories, which I typically like to add peanut butter, oats, and honey to that shake. But because I'm cutting, I like to use fruits because it keeps me a little bit more full and gives me some carbs. This meal is very simple. I just add frozen strawberries, bananas, some whey protein, and some creatine. And like I said before, I'm not some dorky bodybuilder. I don't weigh how many grams of strawberries or how many grams of bananas I put in. I just eyeball it and estimate how much I put in. This shake totals out to about 275 calories, 25 3 grams of protein, 43 grams of carbs, and 1.4 grams of fat. So that's it for my full day of eating. Everything totals out to 1,966 calories, 151 grams of protein, 242 grams of carbs, and 50 grams of fat. Like I said before, this is a very simple full day of eating. And this also shows how easy it is to get protein in. I was barely trying to get protein in. I got 151 grams. And like I said before, the only difference I would make if I were bulking would be adding more carbs to this diet. Because regardless if you're cutting or bulking, you should be getting about 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And again, make sure you're drinking enough water and that will be a successful diet to build more muscle. I hope this simple full day of eating helped your understanding of how to eat to build muscle. Again, if you're looking for programs, the link will be in the description. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.